In the years since the events of How to Train Your Dragon 2, Hiccup has become chief of the village and led the Dragon Riders on many a rescue mission to free and trap dragons from their enemies. However, it turns out things aren't all peachy keen, as there's just not enough room on Burke for both humans and dragons to peacefully coexist without doing too much damage. Not to mention, Hiccup is facing mounting pressure to finally marry Astrid and be a true chieftain of the village. And the capper of all of this is the fact that the raiders from the second movie have also hired Grimmel, a hunter who is an expert in killing Night Furies. With that in mind, Hiccup sets out to find the hidden world of the dragons, so hopefully he and his kind can live in peace with their friends. Unfortunately, it might turn out that the biggest sacrifice Hiccup will have to make is admitting that he might have to let Toothless go. This is How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World. So, um, yeah, uh, overall, this film is really good, but it, I mean, it does a really good job of hitting a lot of the same beats from at least the first one. I, I admittedly have not seen the second one. I, I know what happens in it, obviously. Um, but, yeah, it's kind of just following formula at this point. I think this is true with a lot of the third parts of these things. Um, it does a good job of hitting those beats. Uh, I think the animation is really good. Um, I think the performances are uh, really enjoyable in all of this. Uh, F. Murray Abraham has a uh, Grimmel. Um, I would point out, uh, obviously, Jay Baruchel, America Ferreira. Um, Kate Blanchett as Volca, not really utilized too well. Uh, Kit Harrington as Arid, uh, also not really utilized. Um, but it really, it's, it's, this is really, uh, like, the first one is the Toothless and Hiccup story, and the last one is also pretty much Toothless and Hiccup story. Um, you do get, obviously, the Light Fury that shows up, the female Night Fury. Um, it turns out that this Light Fury had actually been captured by those raiders, and it got left behind. Because uh, they, while they were during the recent raid, they couldn't quite free all the dragons, but they've been able to free quite a bit during these raids. And at one point, Toothless notices, uh, or senses the other uh, Night Fury, or the Light Fury, if you want to just call it that. Um, and it starts to preoccupy them because it turns out Night Fury is basically mate only once in life. And once they find it, like that's all they're preoccupied with is you know, getting together. And. It turns out, though, the Night Fury also does not li uh, the Light Fury does not like uh, Hiccup at all. Anytime he tries to interject, uh, he actually gets attacked, and it's caught, obviously begin to cause some friction. Uh, I mean, there's actually some really good bits in this. Uh, I think again, Grimmel as a villain actually comes across really threatening. I mean, there's a point where he basically walks into the village and uh, breaks into uh, Hiccup's house. And basically says, look, you're not going to win this. So you know, just turn over your Night Furies and I'll leave you alone. And Hiccup basically uh, hits on the idea again because he heard his father talk about this fabled hidden world of the dragons. And that's told a lot in flashback. And that eventually at some point someone's going to have to find that hidden world and seal the entrance. And what Hiccup wants to do is he wants to take everyone from Burke, all the dragons, and seal the entrance from inside so that they can all live together in harmony. And really it's more, especially with Toothless focusing on the Light Fury, it's, you get the growing uh, sense that, again, he has to realize that, you know, you got to grow up and you might have to let Toothless go for the betterment of everyone and for the safety of everyone. Uh, they do flee Burke, uh, they settle on a new island, um, they, it was, they temp it was supposed to be a temporary stop because they don't find the New World. They do find the New World, but it's not like uh, about three quarters of the way through the picture. And it turns out that the dragons that do live in that hidden world uh, are not welcoming to humans at all. So, yeah, he has to, again, this is where he fully realizes it. Um, and again, like the marriage thing that kind of runs through it too is, I think it's the idea of he's... You know, he and Astrid are obviously a couple, but neither of them are really ready to admit that they should be married. And obviously by the end of all of this, they, they do. Um, I guess the other hidden thing is uh, Grimmel can actually control dragons because he has these special types of dragons that emit a venom that can 
yeah, if he doses him correctly, he doses any dragon correctly, he can mind control it, and that's how he sort of starts, he uses the Light Fury as bait, because like I said, the Raiders have the Light Fury. And he's just this ever-present menace that he's able to track them, and it's, like I said, everything that can be found. Um, like I said, there's actually some good humor in most of this, too. Um, you know, obviously you have the goofy dragon courtship scenes and stuff like that. Uh, the twins, um, oh, rough, rough nut, rough nut and tough nut, sorry. Um, tough nut's sort of arc is he goes around claiming he has a beard and that he's wise, and really he's just taken his hair and tied it around his chin. And he, it's a, probably the most uh, development I think that character has ever gotten in this film, because in this franchise, because uh, he's sort of in the fr like they're they're just sort of comic relief. The first one, I guess I haven't I don't really I haven't seen the second one, so I can't say for certain not the the role they play there. But in this one, he's trying to be a mentor to Hiccup, basically advise him on marriage, even though again Hiccup's constantly saying he's not ready for it. But yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, and then there's another scene where they try uh, another point to rescue more dragons and stop, uh, uh, go sorry, God, I can't think what is the, uh, go, the, the villain again, sorry, Grimmel, sorry, <laughs> Grimmel, oh, man, I don't know what happened there, sorry, um, they try to stop Grimmel on a preemptive strike and Somehow, in the midst of everything, Roughnut gets left behind, and Roughnut basically just annoys Grimmel to <laughs> try to allow for an escape, but it turns out that really they just let her go so they can track her to this uh, new hideout, that they're this new island uh, sanctuary they found. But yeah, again, at the end of the day, you know, eventually uh, the Light Fury comes around and does understand the relationship that Toothless and Hiccup have, and... And yeah, it's, uh, and, uh, at the high point during a battle, uh, Volmer starts uh, that after the dragon. Uh, sorry, I don't want to get too much away here. But they do develop actually uh, new dragon armor that is made of dragon scales, so it's fairly impenetrable and it can't be burned. And they can actually they, he uh, because um, Hiccup improves uh, Toothless's prosthetic tail so that uh, Toothless can actually fly without needing guidance anymore. Uh, they actually take that same technology and they turn that into wings so they can act, uh, the dragon riders can actually fly if need be. And it works to an advantage there. And uh, at one point, Hiccup and Grimmel have this air battle and Grimmel starts pulling Hiccup down, and, but with his last bit of strength because Toothless gets shot by one of Grimmel's darts. And he tells the Light Fury to go save uh, Toothless, but the Light Fury actually comes back and saves him, and finally realizes again the way that goes. And with that, uh, they basically, uh, Hiccup tells Toothless to take the dragon to the hidden world and, you know, and leave because the world's just not ready to, for dragons and humans to peacefully coexist. And then we kind of get a bit of a montage through everything. Um, we jump ahead to winter, where Astrid and uh, Hiccup finally get married. And then we jump ahead a few years, and they have kids. And he's telling them about dragons, and you see them out on this boat, and it's then that they come across Hiccup, the Light Fury, and their family. And we then kind of see them going through, flying through. It's like, I don't know if he abandoned the village. I hope, that's, I hope that wasn't part of this. But yeah, that's basically how uh, everything ends. And like I said, the animation, I think, is really well done uh, throughout this whole thing. Everything, I, I thought it was spot on. I think it was great. Uh, I liked a lot of the characterization. And unfortunately, I think some characters were really underutilized. I wonder if maybe they shouldn't have been entirely been in the film that much. It just, yeah, they just they don't seem to play too much of a role. Uh, I mean, Jonah Hill's character, Snoutlout, I mean, he's the bully in the first one, and I'm guessing he probably plays a big role in the second one, but by the third, he, it's basically, the whole joke is he's got the hots for Hiccup's mom, Volca. And that's it. And, yeah, that doesn't really go anywhere. So, I guess overall I would have to give How to Train Your Dragon the Hidden World a B, I think. I, I can't go all the way up to an A. I think there's, like I said, it just hits too many of the same Bs from the previous films that 
it just, it, while it hits them well, it's like you're not really doing anything new. So it just, it's kind of the same old thing. And uh, it does look like they did write a definitive ending to this. So I will give them credit for that. So that uh, Hopefully this means we're not going to get How to Train Your Dragon 4. Or anything like that. Maybe if you do that, like do a massive time skip. Do go like generations down the line. Like we had Vikings, so have it be like you know maybe people in the Renaissance or something to that effect. Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> so yeah, an enjoyable film. Not the greatest, but more than worth it. Me 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 me. You make you roar on a broom. You will soar. No danger how your kazoo monkey step all your be A brand new man of steel. Dream creatures that are real. You'll get your how your kazoo monkey step all your be Bats, dogs, frogs, mice, stepping, molting, melting, ice. Ninjas so quick, flying, flipping, walks the carrot. You'll get your how your clap, your dad, your broom, your big kazoo. Then Saturday morning, beginning at 7 on Kids WB. Sorry for all the coughing that happened there. That's kind of what happens when you try to do this thing without uh, taking a drink or anything. Uh, anyway, it's trailer time, and um, uh, we did get some new trailers, and yeah, a lot of repeats again. Um, we got Disney's Penguins. That's uh, the nature documentary for Earth Day this year. Um, we got Ugly Dolls again. We got uh, Breakthrough again. That's the movie where um, the kid survives uh, being trapped under the ice and um, and there's Christian messages in it. Um, Angry Birds 2, uh, Wonder Park again, uh, last new trailer, Nancy Drew and the Hidden Staircase, um, kind of looked interesting. I, I never grew up with the Nancy Drew stuff. I did, I actually liked the, uh, the movie with Emma Roberts in it where it's the idea of uh, you know, it's Nancy Drew in the prime era that Nancy Drew was like really popular and then transplanted to sort of a modern setting and her being sort of socially awkward. This one's a little bit different. She's much more sort of with it. She has a, yeah, you get more of the supporting cast, I guess, from those books. Uh, after that, we had Dog's Journey again and Secret Life of Pets 2 again. So, yeah, um, anyway, next video, uh, after that is going, next video after this is going to be, obviously, the random trade review on the surrogates. Uh, got the video, got the audio, got the scans, I just need to merge them all together. Um, after that, um, well, we're uh, pretty much a week off, basically. Um, there's not really a movie coming out next week, uh, except for, um, uh, Medea's family funeral, so, yeah. <laughs> um, that's a Medea, like, I think I said that last week, you know, it's a Medea movie. You've seen one, you've seen them all. Um, anyway, uh, uh, so the next movie review is going to be Captain Marvel. That'll be on the 8th-ish, maybe eight, maybe the 9th. Uh, after that, uh, I'll have the itinerary up on my blog. Maybe I'll even put it in the show description if I remember. Hopefully I'll remember. Um, but yeah, uh... And, well, that's sort of it, I guess. I, they, um, WWE Fastlane's that weekend, and uh, I guess there'll be another random trade review at that point, too. Uh, I won't spoil what that'll be on. You'll have to watch the next episode of the Random Trade Review on Sunday to find that out. But, uh, anyway, uh, see you all next time. Hey guys, check out my Patreon and see how you can request a movie for me to review, even if it's some stinker like A Dog's Way Home or the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Also, if you like what you see, give the video a like, share, subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell.